This will be a brief explanation of how to use a separatory funnel when trying to do an extraction. In other words, if you have some material dissolved in one solvent and you want to extract it into a different solvent when the two solvents are not soluble in each other, we often use a separatory funnel. Notice that it has a stopper, sort of a cone shape, and it has what's called a stopcock at the bottom. When the glass is across this way, then the stopcock is closed and nothing can go through. When it's vertical, then there's a hole and the liquid can drain through. So notice what we will do. Well, and there's two different ways you can support it. One is just on a plain iron ring, as I've done here. The other, if your iron ring is too big and your particular separatory funnel won't be held by the iron ring, you can use a, it's called a cork ring. A little bit smaller, but sit on top of the iron ring, and then you can set your separatory funnel in that. We won't be using that today. So, first I'm going to start with a solution of the only iodine in water. And the reason I'm using that particular one is because it's visible, it has a color. Many substances you might extract would be colorless, so it would just look like water. In this case, it has a little bit of color in it because it's iodine. This is the element iodine. So I'm going to pour it in. Obviously, before I poured it in, I wanted to make sure the stopcock was closed. Otherwise, the liquid goes out onto the table and you're embarrassed. So make sure your stopcock is closed before you put anything into your separate funnel. I'm not going to use it all right now. And I'm going to extract it with a solvent called hexanes. It's um, just a nonpolar solvent made of a mixture of alkanes, if that means anything to you. And I'm just going to pour it in on top. As it turns out, it's not soluble in water. And so it forms a separate layer on the top. And before I mix them very well, notice that there's two separate layers. Uh, and there's a clear dividing line between them, top, bottom layer, top layer. I'm going to put my finger very securely on the stopper because what I'm going to do now is shake it. And it's very likely to build up pressure inside. Stop cut close. Finger firmly on the stopper. I'm just going to sh shake it. Not very vigorously first. I'm going to hold it upside down. Again, make sure the finger is on the, on the stopper. I'm going to open the stopcock briefly just to let out a little bit of pressure. Notice that I'm aiming it away from myself and also not towards anybody else in case a little droplet should fly out. Uh, you don't want it to land in anybody's eye. So now close the stopcock again. Again, shake a little bit. Open the stopcock just to relieve any pressure. And we'll do it again. Make sure that the solvent gets good contact with the water layer. Now you may notice a purple color. Notice what's happened is the iodine has gone up into the hexane layer. Still not soluble in each other, but the iodine that was dissolved in the lower layer is now dissolved in the upper layer. And it just turns out that iodine dissolved in hexane has a purple color. That's not really the point here. The point is that the iodine has gone up into the top layer. Now I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes because you will notice that there's still some bubbles in between. The boundary between the top and the bottom layer is a little bit fuzzy and there's some bubbly material there. That's what's called an emulsion. That happens occasionally and it'll eventually disappear. You just have to be patient. I'm going to go ahead and drain out some of the bottom layer into a separate container. Now when you do that, one thing you have to do is take the stopper out. So if you try to drain it with the stopper still in there, there's no way for air to get inside and the pressure will decrease inside as the liquid is draining out and that will force bubbles up to the bottom. You don't want to do that. So just take out the stopper. You can hold it in your fingers that way rather than setting it on the table so it doesn't become contaminated or use a piece of filter paper or a chem wipe and put it on that. Again, I'm trying to keep it from being contaminated. I'm going to turn the stop cut this way so that I can show you as I drain the liquid out The boundary between the two layers will, of course, go down. And you may notice that at this point the emulsion has broken up and it's a nice clean boundary line between the two layers. I'm going to 
carefully drain out that last little bit. As you get closer and closer to the bottom, because of the conical nature of the flask, the boundary will move faster and faster to the bottom, so you need to be very careful and not let the top layer get into the bottom layer until I could drain that into a, another container. And I reflected a separation between extracting the ether from the water layer into a hexane layer. Now you may notice that there's still some yellow color to the water here. It should be clear, so what that suggests is that there's still a little bit of iodine dissolved in the water. I'm going to pour it back in and see if we can't extract that last little bit of iodine out of the water. So I'll take a fresh hexane sample, pour it into the separatory funnel. Put the stopper back on, and again, make sure that the two layers are intimately mixed by shaking. And notice that I've extracted some more of the iodine out of the water layer into the hexane layer. It leaves under pressure. And again, drain the bottom layer into a separate container. Now one thing you'll notice is that the purple color is a lot less intense now than it was to begin with. I extracted a lot more iodine out the first time than I did the second time. And in each subsequent extraction, you will, of course, get less and less of the substance to be extracted. Now, depending upon the experiment, you might want to put the substance that you extracted back in and re-extract it with some other solvent. That's perfectly possible.